Hey, I'm back with the second part of the 1.2 section review on exponents and radicals. Continuing with what I was talking about, if you check out number 29, it has a few, it has one more example when you're multiplying powers with same bases. Um, I, you know, now that I'm looking at this example, I don't see too much interest in it, but we've already started, so let's Let's just do it. All right, so the idea is, if it's not taken to any power, then you move to the next part of the order of operations, right? Multiply, uh, well, exponents, which can't do much with them now because they're all variable, or then multiply and divide. So commutative property lets us bring these two side by side. It allows us to bring these two side by side, and it allows us to put these two side by side. That can only happen if you get rid of these exponents, when you actually apply whatever's uh, on the outside of these parentheses. So that gives us 20, x to the negative 3, and x and y to the 1. I guess I was just showing that, hey, make sure you know how to add and subtract negative numbers to positive numbers, blah, blah, blah. And then if you're left with a negative exponent, make sure you rewrite it with that one listed in its right space. So it's kind of like everybody's assumed to be on the top part of the fraction when there is no fraction, right? The best way you turn a whole number into a fraction is to put it over 1. Well, now the x to the negative 3 can be moved to the bottom and called x to the positive 3. All right, 31. Let's see, what do we got there? Oh, we're incorporating fractions at the beginning now. So let's do this. Hello. Number 31 starts out with 3x to the fifth, y to the fourth, z over x to the zero? Okay. y to the negative 3 and z, the whole thing squared. There's a couple different ways you can, you can approach this. You can say, let's, throw, let's put that 2 to all the parts right away. But if you can think about order of operations in the sense of, hey, do the stuff inside of parentheses first to make things simpler, that might be a better idea. Division creates subtraction of the exponents for simplification. So uh, x to the fifth over x to the zero is pretty much like saying, what's five minus zero? It's five. And since it's a positive exponent, you can just leave it up top. So you're gonna have x to the five up top. You've got y to the 4 over y to the negative 3. That's going to be 4 minus negative 3. And if you'll recall from your algebra days or pre-algebra days, subtracting a negative is the same as adding that positive number. So it's 7. The z's cancel each other out. Anything divided by itself is just 1, and anything times 1 just kind of absorbs it. The 3 is all alone still, and there's nobody on the bottom. So. I'm just going to put a 1 there as a placeholder, but we really don't need to even incorporate it anymore. It's still squared, so don't forget about that. Also, keep in mind that if I did this difference, if I subtracted it and it was a negative exponent, I would actually want to rewrite it as a positive exponent on the bottom. You might encounter that in one of your uh, exercises for the homework. So the squared 3 times 3 is not 6, it's 9. That seems to be a common error for some people. So 9, and then it's x to the 10, y to the 14. All right, 36 escalated a little bit. We brought in fractional exponents. So you've got a to r to the one-third power times 2r to the half. Now, first of all, again, we've got to honor, honor the order of operations. The one-third, I can't start moving things side by side until I've dealt with the fact that there's a one-third exponent being applied to the 8 and being applied to the 3. So this is 8 to the one-third power, r to the one-third power. This is just an implied 1 out here, so we can rewrite it on the outside. 8 to the 1 third, here's sort of like a thought bubble about 8 to the 1 third. Remember, this is 8 to the first power. Oh boy, you can't see that. Now you can. And it's the cube root of that. 
oh, what's the cube root of 8? Well, 8's 2 times 2 times 2. Oh, it's just 2. So it's 2 here times the 2 there times uh, these two powers multiplied together. So that's 4. Now, if you recall, when powers were put side by side like this, when we multiply powers with the same base, you added them. That doesn't change with fractional exponents here. We just now have to, without a calculator, make sure that we understand how to add fractions. So the key is making sure you have common denominators. So 6 between these two. So I've got to multiply the top and bottom of this by 2 to make a 6 down here. I've got to multiply this by 3 times 3 to make a common denominator of 6 over here. So it's going to be 2 over 6 plus 3 over 6. That's going to equal 5 over 6. So that's R's new uh, exponent. And I guess keep in mind that you could also say that R to the, R to the 5 6 power really means the sixth root of r to the 5. Same, same, same thing. Good. Good. All right. Uh, the next one I wanted to talk about was number 45. It's a bit of a, it's kind of like a complex one of this type. By the way, I think I'm erring on the side of giving you too many examples than erring on the side of giving you too few with this whole video thing. So, uh, yeah. I guess I'd rather give you too many than have you being like, I have no clue how to do any of this. All right, enough of me talking about extra stuff that doesn't matter. Number 45. We are given, let's get a closer look here. We got some little numbers. You got x to the sixth power, y to the third, taken to the negative one third power. Over x to the four, y squared to the negative half. You should pause the video and see if you can do this on your own. All right, unpause. This guy is just going to travel instantly to both parts, as is this one. You're just multiplying them. So 6 times negative a third, just make sure you remember how to multiply a fraction times a whole number. 6 times negative 1 third, assume the 6 is over 1 now, and you can actually cross cancel. 6 divided by 3 is 2 over 1. It's negative 2 over 1, so x to the negative 2. Uh, 1 third of 3 is just 1, and since it was negative and that's positive, negative 1 there. And then they're asking what 4 times negative half is. Well, half of 4 is 2. It's x to the negative 2. And y half of 2 is 1, and it's a negative. Oh, anything divided by itself is 1. Keep in mind, like, I didn't do a bunch of extra stuff where I'm like, let's make sure all the exponents are positive. So move this guy up here and that one down there. And this one up here and make it positive, and that one down there and make it positive. I didn't do any of that. Because once you recognize certain facts like that, you can just go straight to the conclusion. Uh, let's see here. Which one did I want to do? It says, touch upon 47 through 56. What does that mean? OK. Um, and 47 through 52, they talk about rewriting expressions using rational exponents. Uh, basically, just make sure you understand what they're talking about in terms of, like, number 51. Number 51 says... You've got the square root of x squared plus y squared. And they're wanting you to simplify it as much as you possibly can. So this is sort of like a 2 on the outside, right? Square root. And you have to piece this together as if it's the whole quantity to a 1 power. 
All right, x squared plus y squared don't don't behave in the same way that a single term would inside of a square root. They're kind of connected with that addition inside of the, the root. So you have to say that they're connected there for good. So it's now x squared plus y squared to the 1 divided by 2 power. Now the reason why I highlighted this particular example is because a lot of students want to make up sort of like a rule that seems to be an obvious extender of what they learned before. Like it seems like an obvious extension would be, can I apply the 1 half to both the x squared and apply it to the y squared? The answer is no. And all I got to do is come up with like a, a fairly basic example here. Like let's say that x, let's say that x equals uh, 3 and y equals 4. Let's just, let's just assign those values for x and y. So if this is the case, what is the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared? Well, that's 9 plus 16. The square root of that is 5. Okay, right? Now, if a person was thinking that they could just straight up distribute the one-half here, that would make it x to the one power, right? One-half times two would be x to the one. So it would be like, all right, x to the one plus y to the two times a half would also be to the one power. So it would be like, hey, what's x plus y? Can you guys see that? Barely. Okay. 7 does not equal 5. And 5 is the legit way in which we went to the original statement there and said, plug in 3, plug in 4, it's 5. So, don't make up rules that you can't prove. That's the answer. That's the simplified version of turning in a root back into a, a fractional exponent. Um, I'm just, you know what, I'm not going to talk about 53 through 56. It's just a matter of working the opposite way on that. Uh, maybe I have time for 65. I have time for 65. So it's the cube root of 8. Okay, one thing to highlight here, and it's not this, one thing to highlight here is that I can apply a really quick method of simplifying uh, powers inside of a root. And that simplifying method is I can just take the 6 divided by 3 right away. I don't need to expand it as a times a times a times a times a times blah 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 like that. I can just do the division right away. So we've already talked about the cube root of 8. It's 2 times 2 times 2. Cube root of 8 is 2. This is a to the 6 divided by 3, which is a squared. Negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. So make sure you guys, you pay attention to like, oh yeah, that's a quick way of simplifying things and not always just expanding everything out. At which point you should say the b to the negative 1 should move to the bottom. And I don't even think you need to put the 1 power there. All right, do we have time for 71? Um, let's not risk it. New video coming up shortly.